Hi, it's Mark with Ableton Daily. Creating wobble bass with the operator instrument. Last week I created a tutorial on creating wobble bass with the analog instrument, and both of these instruments are available on the Ableton website. But I understand some people might have only one or the other, so I decided to create a video for both. So wobble bass. <laughs> During this tutorial, I'll show you how to create wobble bass with the operator instrument, including two oscillators, along with a modulated frequency cutoff and also a saturator plugin along with that. This adds a little bit more depth and dirties up the sound a little bit. Here's without the saturator. And here's without the second oscillator. The second oscillator can thicken the sound just a tight bit. In some cases, make it worse. But your best friend is the frequency cutoff. So there you have it. Okay, let's go ahead and start the tutorial. To begin, go ahead and create a MIDI channel or go ahead and drag the operator instrument onto the timeline in the arrangement view and that'll create a new MIDI channel. But uh, since I already have a MIDI channel here, I can just go ahead and drag the operator instrument into the plugin box at the bottom. You can also do this in session view, it's pretty easy to do. So here's the basic sound. Okay, just a basic sine wave by default. And we have four oscillators here inside operator. And operator is just, really all it is is just a very, almost like a traditional digital synthesizer, basically, as opposed to the analog instrument, which is typically more similar to an analog synthesizer. So you have a lot of uh, oscillators in here. You have a lot of little toys to play with, um, many, many options uh, versus the analog. Uh, so, but we're going to keep it simple. We're going to start with one oscillator here. And you can see that oscillator A already has the volume turned up and all the other ones, the volume is turned down. Well, that makes it easy for us. So we'll just start off with uh, this first one here. So the first thing you'll notice, if you just click in a blank or spaced white area inside this oscillator A, you'll have a little option here to select what type of sine wave, or I'm sorry, what type of os or what type of waveform to choose for this wobble bass. Um, so you're going to get different results. Uh, a lot of a very common waveform is like a square wave. So if I choose that. <laughs> So it's pretty fat. Uh, there's many waveforms to choose from inside operators. So uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'll just choose the square D because square D has a really hard edge to it. Okay, cool. So next, let's go over to the LFO, which is right here. So go ahead and click on it anywhere, just like right here, and that'll select it. And let's start modulating a frequency cut off. And so, but first we're going to uh, make this LFO. So I'll just go ahead and turn this on. You may notice right away that it's tied into uh, oscillate or modulate the pitch. It's okay. Don't panic. Uh, but you can see right here where it says destination, where we're sending this LFO to, like where are we going to send that to? Well, it looks like right here, the filter, F-I-L, I'm assuming that it means filter, I'm sure it does, uh, but it's turned off. So here's what I want you to do, is just go ahead and uh, go ahead and turn off A, B, C, and D. You may need A, let me go ahead and try this. Yeah, so this is really good. 
just go ahead and turn off A, B, C, and D, and just send this LFO to the filter. Okay, so make sure you have that on. Next, what you must do is turn on the filter. So turn it on by clicking the little box right here. And then you have the frequency cutoff right here, and you also have the resonance. By default, it's set to low 12 dB, which is just a low-pass filter, so that's really good. Let's go ahead and press the key and see what this sounds like. Okay, so we're starting to modulate the frequency cutoff. I'll turn up the amount on the LFO so you can hear this a little bit better. Go ahead and turn the amount all the way up so we can really hear that affecting the sound. Okay, so you almost have almost like a little bit of a wobble bass already. Uh, I have a pretty long keyboard over here, so what I'm going to do is just turn the course down for this oscillator A. I'm going to turn it down to 0 0.5. Okay, so that's all we did, really. Uh, we're, we've selected a square, way, a square wave for oscillator A, and we've also adjusted the LFO as, you know, we're sending the LFO just to the filter and then that enables us to modulate the frequency cutoff we also have a rate here we can control the speed of the modulation okay there you go and so uh what else do we have here well we can control the frequency i can turn this all the way up and you may not hear the results you're looking for. It's just because the frequency cutoff is too high. But if I turn it down much lower, you're going to hear more of a wobbly sound. Okay. And to sharpen that, you can add a little bit of resonance, but not too much. Too much resonance will ruin the sound. But just a little bit might give it a little bit of an edge. That sounds good. Okay, so what else can we do here? This sounds really good so far. I can open up the frequency just a little bit more to get some more clarity. Okay, so that's that's the basis of the sound. So we've just created the wobble bass with operator. All right. Well, we can also add a second oscillator and operator to thicken the sound just a little bit more. So all we have to do is just, uh, I can just click on it here and I'll turn up the level a little bit. Sometimes waveforms can have phase issues. If you have two sawtooths colliding with each other, sometimes they can overlap and, and also like kind of create some type of phase effect, which in some cases will remove the lower end from the sound. So you'll have to play with the level a little bit. Currently it's on sine wave. Ableton defaults operator to sine wave for all the oscillators, and that's fine. I'll switch this to square D down here. And I'll turn the course down to a negative 0 0.5. Uh, if you don't like the sound, you can just go ahead and turn it off by clicking on the letter here. All right, let's move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to add a saturator plugin. This will really increase and add a an hard edge onto the sound. So just over here in the live devices, go ahead and expand auto effects. And did I say auto? It sounded like auto, audio effects. Okay. So come over here and select saturator, drag saturator, just right next to the operator instrument. And then turn on color and set this uh, drop down menu here. Set that to medium curve. Let's play with the sound a little bit. Okay. With the saturator, you're going to get more of a, like a popular trendy dubstep type sound. So I wanted to go ahead and include that for those of you dubstep fans out there. 
Uh, but if you turn on color and you have a medium curve and you crank up the depth, you're really going to get that sound that a lot of people are after. <laughs> Okay, and so that's cool. Uh, that's you can play with the frequency. I found to get the best results controlling the frequency and the depth here. Okay, something else really cool, uh, just to give an extra tip out there, uh, you can also assign the rate knob, which is right here, to a external MIDI controller. I'll just click on MIDI at the top here and go ahead and click on rate. I'll go over to my controller and turn one of the knobs here to assign that. Go ahead and re-click on MIDI. And now you can control the rate knob with uh, an external controller. Let's go ahead and try that out. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This is Mark, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.